Hi, I'm Belinda Subramon, and I wanted to welcome you personally to GAS 16 video show. We begin with J.C. Roden from Berlin and other places. He's a sound engineer there, and uh, he, he produces a beautiful, impactful piece uh, revolving around war. Following that, Monica Gomez from El Paso, Texas, uh, gives us a poem about PTSD. And then Debbie Tosin Kilday, the founder and owner of the National Beat Poetry Foundation, Incorporated, gives us an impactful poem about her cousin who was number one in the Vietnam lottery. After that, we have an artist from El Paso, Efren Salazano, with uh, art also to me is related to war. It's skeleton pieces and things like that. And J.C. Roden has offered some impactful music to go with it. Followed by, or coming next is Leonard Lunt, who has a couple of pieces also related to war. Then Paul Richmond says, if you want things to change, well, do it now. And then he tells us he has no culture. Maybe you shouldn't either, because he's American. Thank you. Between the wars, the bells were ringing. Between the wars, the birds were singing. Between the wars, the relief was great, and love grew skyward again, and so did business. And love was cold, paradise, longing, hope, the bright spot. And resplendent cruelty was replaced by cruel beauty, and hope was called the one minute minute. There were lots of memories, and all were true. Shape and void, trial and error, monsters on a leash, phasing out and drifting off. The knock-on effect, vengeance, an artistic approach to madness, nexus, plexus, love, imperative and story, command and refusal, climate change, air pollution, black heroin and stupid neighbors, delirium, cell phones and divine insanity, lots of memories, all true, thunder, whispers, all true. Between the wars, we lay awake all night. We didn't sleep, we just dreamed. Between the wars, we went to church. We didn't pray, we just knelt. Lots of memories, all true. Love burned on love, fire ignited on fire. We spread our greed as a result of rumors. Lots of rumors, all true. Thunder whispers, all true. Consistent pain, separate from the surface, but connected to the core. Spell incantation, slowed and reworked. Dissolved in seasons, in threshing machines. The glorious dizziness of flesh and bones, given and transmitted by circumstances, mindsets and battlefield solutions. Consistent pain, or chew. Thunder, whispers, or all true. true.
Hello, my name is Monica Gomez. I live in El Paso, Texas. And over a decade ago, I married a Vietnam veteran with severe PTSD. This poem is entitled House Guests. When I married a Vietnam vet, U.S. Army Ranger, Special Forces, Cobra Pilot, Studies and Observation Group, at the siege of Quezon with the Marines, three consecutive tours under Colonel Crozier, 03 Captain. Seventeen men he ordered into the jungle who never returned. All came to live with us. A combat pocked crew that steps out of the walls, around corners, out of dreams uninvited, bringing black moods and cold shadows, flashbacks and night terrors, rage, blame, and anguish. I open the blinds, he closes them. To me, it's a view, to him, it's exposure. My peaceful sunset, his killing time. My serene reflecting pool of reeds and waterfowl, his snake-infested paddy for sitting ducks. Five decades ago, from the safety of home, my teenaged mind followed friends into dense jungle where the horror of being hunted turned them inside out, made them choose, morphed them into hunters, aching to escape conversion into red spray on green landscape long enough to make that plane ride back to the world. So when I want to evict the whole dark mob along with the alpha male who survived Nam long enough to bring them all back with him, I remember how I ached for the boys in the jungle, now haunted men, and I welcome him home one more time. I'm remembering um, a lot of people that we lost in the Vietnam War. And one of them was my first cousin. His name was Dennis. And he, he his number was number one in the lottery. This is called Reluctant Soldier. It's a number you always wish to be. Top dog, number one, first in your class. To most, it seems like a good thing, a sign of honor, ahead of the rest, one of the best. But now that number brings fear to your heart. You stand armed at the front, alone as one who feared the unknown. You're the number one enemy, first to be seen, only to be recognized as the first target. This is the one time you're just one soldier, a person whose number identifies you as willing to be the first to die. An honor for some, for you must fight hoping to survive, to be first to return home.
Hi, I'm Leonard Lund, coming to you from just outside Chicago. My offering for you this time around is a pair of poems from my 2014 collection, So Careless of Themselves. Crossing Europe, 1944. The bastards have roused us from the watery bottom of foxholes again. And again it's the wee hours when even God's asleep. Typical ass-backwards army. My barking dogs protest the chafe of well-worn boots. Cold fingers fumble to tape my dog tags silent. It's a worse life than a goddamned dog's. As proof, they call us dog-faced soldiers, teach us unflinching obedience, and send us baying to the fields and woods as harriers among pillboxes and terriers against the hedgerows. Done Crossing Europe, 1945. Ernie's got a favorite letter out of all the ones his wife sent. The first one he got after Omaha and the battle to get off the beach. Our daughter's arrived, it starts, and she already has your smile. He's read it twice a day and passed it around so often we know it all by heart. Regardless of how tenderly it's been handled, carefully it's been opened and refolded, small tears were bound to come. It's the second day of April. There's a sniper down the street. There'll be a telegram and no matter how Lizzie handles it, that paper will be full of tears. I don't know if you've heard, but the word on the street is, we're fucked. The daily propaganda, it's not gonna change. And for some reason, people are doing this mantra that says, it's useless to try. That's right, they just keep saying that over and over again. It's useless to try. Don't even bother. We're just here to tell you, that's a lie. That's right, that's a lie. Things happen because you make it happen. But you can't just ask for it. You gotta make it happen. We're talking about making it happen. Do it now. Do it now. talking culture. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you have a culture? I don't have a culture. No, no, it was lost at immigration. That's right. You know, where names were changed, languages were lost. We don't have a culture anymore. You should be an American. Lose that accent. Try looking like an American. Look in the magazines. You'll see how to look. That's right. Now, my two sides of the family, yeah, they tried to kill each other for generations. One side almost exterminated the other side. Yeah. And my mother and father, they came together in an American factory where people get melted together. Yeah, that's right. But I don't have a culture. And some people say that I appropriate cultures. I'm just saying to you, that I walk through a graveyard of buried cultures because I don't have one. The second part to our show, well, we changed the tone a bit. We have a beautiful song uh, composed and produced by Amanoia Circus. Uh, a wonderful uh, group of artists uh, who have uh, based their uh, song on a poem by George Wallace from New York City. And then we're followed by Sultana Raza, originally from India, but currently living in Luxembourg. And she offers um, 
a very uh, whimsical piece, I think. Um, and then we have Chris Bodar, recently named state of Florida Beat Point Laureate, who uh, offers a, one of his um, traveling poems or commuter poems from, from the 90s. Um, Derek J. Brown, also known as Libras Monastico from Scotland, he offers um, an interesting montage with a video and poem. And then Beat Poet Society from Sweden uh, offers up a song, which I understand uh, they make their songs um, from uh, the work of Bint of Bortland, who is the uh, International Beat Poet Laureate Lifetime uh, from Sweden. And we have uh, Lori Greenspan with a with um, a very whimsical piece on whales, uh, made with uh, uh, interesting graphics. You'll see. And then Joan Borland from Scotland offers a piece she made uh, on TikTok actually about poetry or poets being Marines, word Marines. We end with Bob McNeil, and uh, he does a, a voice-only piece, but it's very short and good advice for writers. And somewhere in there near the end, I'll offer a piece with my own poetry, art, and music. You'll see it's only uh, like 37 minutes, so I hope you see it from front to back and enjoy the whole experience. Thank you very much. <laughs> Every daisy, every fucking daisy that I 
This poem is called Winged Wisdom. Uh, this poem is inspired by Keats's journey when he was going from England to Rome. And he is, we imagine he's now in England on the river, uh, going down south to catch his ship to Rome. And since here we are in beautiful Luxembourg and we can hear many, many different kinds of birds chirping on, you know, this is almost the first day of spring. So I thought I would uh, speak about this poem here. Uh, I'm going to recite it now. So winged wisdom. Along ferns of river, trilling flowers espied. He couldn't sort all notes, though they chirped and cried. Crafty crows taunted, sure you'll come back? Owl advised him, try another tack. Red robin warned, don't bare your breast so. Would he soon be extinct like the old dodo? Blackbird stole away, sheen of silver eyes. Eagle said, above all your issues you can rise. Chatty swallows tittered, lose yourself in our chat. Hard to forget were wings of vicious bat. Beware of quacks, cackled old duck. Doves dropped feathers for his good luck. Kingfisher called, you're too pale. Don't give up hope, intoned the quail. Curlew's mournful call he chose not to heed. Skylark's invitation he didn't need. Unseen vibes bloomed as busy birds sang. Receded for a while, infection's shady fang. Woodpecker's calls on coffin sounded grave. Nightingale assured him, your song I'll save. Silent swans on splashing streams floated by serene. Would his last refrain be as hauntingly keen? A semblance of flesh circulates among stone menageries, pharaoh statues. Everything comes with astrologer's warnings. Kubrick's ship and bone, a one and the same. Alchemists prepare magical potions, a dram to transcend outer limits of eyes. The cosmic mind, just a man in a swing. Gerard Manley Hopkins spitting scorn at Christ. Not so much empty seats, just an empty house. A funeral slideshow, the legacy of a louse. From museums of wax, custard pie fights, discarded exhibits, indulge in hilarity. Escaped specimens from secret laboratories Plot the revenge on immortal captors Barbie dolls reflect in cosmetic mirrors Quickly turn sentient, apply their own shades Rocking horses engage slaughterhouse dramas Black candelabras shoot white hot flames Cursed by its nature Clocks mutilate time, rotary telephones, bleed afterlife voices, prosthetic tongues utter strange fruit, keen to discover hell's hidden structure, malleable fingers prod holy screens, send their questions direct to the source. The curiosity shops, storefront display, Shows alien brains and transparent vats Little girls with no eyes Mouths made of wood Exotic stuffed animals Wielding toy violins Decomposed babies In perspex containers Celestial teapots of the Euclid plane In the distance a bridge 
that nothing can cross. Skin and bone puppets move to temples of loss, somewhere to past, somewhere to future. And always the present, a bride left at the altar, all of us obsessed with the art of false echoes, remnants of makeshift, torture devices, the psyches of objects. Hey everyone, this is Chris Bodor with the Ancient City Poets and uh, here in St. Augustine, Florida, we just had a rainstorm getting towards the evening and cooled off the uh, heat that we were experiencing, you know, typical summertime uh, weather, but it's the perfect time to sneak onto the front porch and uh, share some poetry with you. This is something called Railroad Ties. I wrote it in 1984, sorry, it's 1994, 95, and 96, like three year period, I was riding back and forth from upstate New York to New York City uh, for a day job and got out the pen and started handwriting poems into a notebook. So, this is like the best of the train of thought commuter poems. Uh, it's wild to look back at it all these years later and. Uh, I started taking the poems to open mic uh, readings and uh, some of the times I didn't like what I saw but sometimes I would look in the mirror and not like what I saw. The Emperor of the Microphone, black from your beret deep down to your boots, well well well, so very well read, so wise, you, you embody all that I despise big head big words your goatee you wear it on your big chin and you also wear a shit eating grin a microphone and a manuscript a photo opportunity tonight is the big show your black poet costume is carefully ironed but the irony lies in the fact that your words are synthetic like polyester, I guess it was the beret that gave you away. You said you're a poet, so prove it. Your spoken words lie lifeless on the cafe floor. How many more minutes must the audience endure? They wanted heartache, but you gave us a headache. Emperor of the microphone, please go back to the drawing board. Rewrite, revise, reveal, invite the crowd to feel what you feel. Let the audience see your insides, focus on your feelings that lie deep underneath the black and forget about the falsehoods and the clothes upon your back. Thank you again for this excellent opportunity to be a part of what's going on with this broadcast. Thanks again. Take care.
The Eagles and Everything. Everything teaches us the circle of our lives, the way the earth spins, the face of the clock, the time of day, then night, then day. Inside the circle, we intersect, form designs that disappear, ethereal mandelas, somewhat skewed in the atmosphere, glowing mysteriously over mountains. The sound of water soothes us, echoes of the womb, sounds of fluid shifting in a personal sea, a heartbeat and oneness and warmth. Then we are born crying. The ancient ones soothe us. We all long for the mothership, and connection, but we can't reach back. The circle goes around in one direction, repeating itself, a carousel of figures rising and falling. Everything in space revolves, bits break off and burn, self-destruct into another thing, failing the lesson of no escape. Despite what one believes, nature, the cosmos, every atom and cell teaches, deal now or later, all transforms but never leaves. Poet, short stops. The words came in a waking dream. First, on a road of whales. I thought it uncommon that a whale blocked my path. Why, sir, do you lounge here out of your ocean? I am first on a road of whales, it said, and you must climb me to continue. I dwelled on its words, not understanding why it gave me this trial. Perhaps it was the back of the humpbacked hill that triggered my courage. This obstacle, so alive, it rolled continuously ahead of me, challenging me to confront the life I wanted, as real as any phantom of the sea. And so I climbed. Behind me the whales soared, ahead their areas thrived all gentle songs encouraging, in front, always first alive. I hear and see them out there. They are poetry marines. 
They have served their time. They have earned language stripes using their word skills honed, well-oiled muscles and machines. The poets are different. The poets are marines. Marines are compelled to write. From experiences lived, different lives. They have served their time and earned some medals when books get published and people buy their wordy drives. Poets symbiotic with life absorb, observe, recount in poem story. They've served their time with pens. They take people with them on journeys they wouldn't go on in their own lives. By proxy readers get rust and glory. Poets are really very strange. The things in life they need to word express Touched by language is preferred. They are heard and read from a distance. Poets have found their own philosopher's stone. They are word alchemists who need to confess. Poets are strange. Poets are very strange. Welcome them in. Expose your mind to them. Give them your story. Be it guts or glory. Expose your mind to them. To their word danger. They'll make into your story. Poets are word marines. Regardless of whether your being's balloon is touching the troposphere or deflating on the salt flats, continue to write. If you are as dour as a mourner, write about it. If your days possess the jubilation that a lottery winner knows, write about it. Chronicle who and what you are before you are no more. In the rental home known as life, remember the pending end of your lease. Therefore, before relocating to a necropolis, create at the rate rabbits procreate. Calendars do not determine your days. The number of poems, stories, essays, drawings, and performances define your time as an artist. From my point of view, all artists should use that approach as time encroaches.